this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have Tubby. And Tubby presents with reports of a dry mouth and has persistent coughing that frequently interrupts his therapy sessions. The patient has recently started taking a low dose of Prevental HFA that he was directed to take before strenuous activity. This medication is most likely used to treat which condition? So we got A, pulmonary edema. B is bronchospasm. C, stable angina. And D is an AV node electrical blockade. All right, so pretty straight up question here. Not a ton of content, not a ton of words in here, so we could break it down pretty easily. And, and a lot of those terms you should be familiar with, a lot of those conditions you should be familiar with for the MPTE, all right? So let's go ahead right up to the top, Tubby Presents. Now, hold on, I gotta stop for a moment. Now, y'all know I love you, right? Y'all know I love you. And so you may have noticed that each each and every one of these episodes comes with a name in front of it, right? I always start off with a name. And the reason being is that when you attach things to a name, it allows you to retain the information better, all right? When you create a story or a person or a situation around a concept, it allows you to retain it better. So that's the reason why I do that. But especially, I stop today because Tubby is the nickname of my grandfather, Maurice L. Rice. So I had to put him in and give him his, his due respect. So love you, Pat. All right. So Tubby presents with reports of a dry mouth. All right. And I'll go ahead and underline that. And has persistent coughing that frequently interrupts his therapy sessions. All right. So I'm looking at that first sentence. We're seeing that the patient has dry mouth and persistent coughing that's interrupting the therapy sessions. I'm just keeping that in mind. That alone, ah, you know, I don't know if that's really going to help us that much, but I, I do know that I want to hold on to it. It may help me. So I'll go ahead and underline it for now, but pretty straightforward, right? Dry mouth, persistent coughing. Great. We're moving down to the next sentence. It says the patient has recently started a low dose of prevental HFA that he was directed to take before strenuous activity. So we need to break down this one because it has a lot of juiciness in it. All right. It says low dose of prevental HFA. Now, one thing that you need to be ready for on the MPTE is the medications. Now, I'm not promising you a thousand questions on medications, but there'll be a decent amount. And so it, it behooves you to have an understanding of these medications or side effects, what they're used for and, and, and so forth. Now, do you know what provincial HFA is? And maybe you don't know it by the way I'm saying it. So for those of you on the podcast, that's P-R-O-V-E-N-T-I-L, all right, provincial HFA. Do you know what that medication is used for? That's the first thing I'm thinking. What is this used for? So when I look at that medication name, there's something that sticks out to me about it. It's the V, V as in Victor, E-N-T, Vent. Anytime I see that in a, in a medication name, the first thing I think of is ventilation. And if you notice a lot of your drug names, they will have like what they kind of do or what they're what they're trying to treat. They actually have it in the name for a lot of medications. And Provental, I'm thinking of ventilation. Patient potentially is having some issues with ventilation, and I'm using this medication to help with that. Well, guess what? Provental HFA is a medication that's used to treat things like obstructive lung conditions where a person's having difficulty getting air out. We, we know that this is an issue that has something to do with like some type of restriction of the bronchi, right? And that could be, again, like an obstructive lung condition where they're having a difficulty getting air out. It could be asthma, you know, things such as that, all right? So provincial HFA, that is going to be what we call a beta adrenergic agonist. All right, so it stimulates those beta adrenergic receptors. Okay, big name, big name. What the heck do you really mean? Well, here's the deal. The beta adrenergic agonist, what it really does is it stimulates those beta adrenergic receptors. And when it does that, it relaxes smooth tissue around the bronchi. All right, 
So take, hey, you might have to slow up the car on that one. Definitely put that one down in the nose. Provental HFA, it is really going to be relaxing smooth tissue around the bronchi. Why would you need that? Well, let's go ahead and continue down the question. Let's see if we can figure that out. So it says that the patient was taking a low dose of Provental HFA that he was directed to take before strenuous exercise. And that makes sense because if I, I, I don't really want my patient to have that, that, that restriction there, right? Like, uh, you know, any type of uh, situation where they're having difficulty breathing and so forth. And so uh, Provental, you know, to really break it out even further and simplify it, it's a bronchodilator, all right? So if you're looking for a drug class, like what drug class is it? It is a bronchodilator. And it makes sense that he was, you know, directed to take this before strenuous activity, all right? So here's the deal. The last sentence of the question says, this medication is most likely used to treat which condition? So all I really need to do here is understand what this medication is used for, and then it'll help me to rule in and rule out these answer choices. Sound good? All right. So for those of you on the podcast, let me go through the answer choice again. A says pulmonary edema. All right, B is bronchospasm, C is stable angina, D is an AV node electrical blockade. Let's break these down one by one. Pulmonary edema, we know that that's increased fluid inside of the lung spaces, uh, the lung tissue, and we can get this for different reasons, right? Could be a left congestive heart failure that's backing up into the lungs causing it. Uh, but it also could be some type of inflammatory condition of the lungs where it's just producing all of this excess inflammation and fluid. Well, here's the deal. Do I use provental HFA, this bronchodilator for pulmonary edema? I would say, no, that's not one of the medications I would really use for that. I mean, to really help it, I wouldn't use that. I would use something along the lines of uh, potentially like a diuretic, you know, furosemide, Lasix, something along the lines of that to decrease the amount of fluid in the body and therefore decrease the amount of fluid in the lungs. That's a route that I would go down. But if the pulmonary edema was being caused by something like just a lot of inflammation inside of the lung space, then I would need to think about another type of medication. Again, it wouldn't be provental. Maybe something along the lines of like a steroid, a corticosteroid or something like that, methylprednisone, something to decrease the amount of inflammation that's happening. So either way, I don't like pulmonary edema. I'm going to put a big X next to it. All right. And then let's go to the next one. Bronchospasm. All right. So let's go ahead and really spell this one out. Bronchospasm. That's where the smooth muscle tissue around the bronchi, they start to spasm, right? the involuntary contraction of the smooth muscle around the bronchi. Why is that a problem for us? What is that really causing? Well, that's causing the restriction that I was talking about to where the person's not getting very good airflow. And so that is a problem. Now, is that something that Provental can help with? Is that something that a bronchodilator can help with? Hex yeah. That makes complete sense. And Provental is a medication that is used for it. All right, and so I'm gonna go ahead and put a check mark next to it. And just for your notes, let me add this in here. That Provental actually has another name and it's it's Ventolin. You may have known it by that name, Ventolin. But there's also, uh, you know, it's a major name that you may see come up on the MPTE known as Albuterol. Have you heard of that one before? Maybe that brings you back to the pharmacology of PT school a little bit. Albuterol, yeah. So we're really talking about the same type of medication here. And albuterol is a bronchodilator. Again, one of the major things it helps with is COPD, asthma, bronchospasm. 100%. I love it. But as always, we got to make sure that we go through the remaining answers to make sure that our answer is correct. So let's look at C. C says stable angina. So we know angina is chest pain, right? Stable angina, that is a condition where the patient presents with chest pain typically due to some type of uh, exertion. So it's exertional chest pain. Why do they get the chest pain? Well, typically it's due to myocardial ischemia, not infarction, ischemia. And so what is the medication that I would use for it? Prevental, HFA, albuterol? No, that's not going to help stable angina. 
something along the lines of nitroglycerin. Were you thinking that too? You were thinking, that? All, right, all right, nitroglycerin is what we would be using here. And so I'm gonna put a big X next to this one. It's not likely, all right? Let's go ahead and look at our last answer here, D. It says AV node electrical blockade, all right? So this is an AV node block. Don't get tripped up by the name. This can happen on the MPTE where it's kind of worded a little different. You're kind of like, oh my God, what is an AV node electrical blockade? I've never heard it written out like that. I've just seen AV node block. It's the same exact thing, all right? So we don't want to get tripped up by that. But when we look at it, it's kind of like, okay, would I use Prevental in order to treat an AV node electrical blockade? The answer to that is no, I wouldn't. All right, first of all, uh, an AV node block, uh, it, it tends to be caused by a lot of medications. I mean, if your patient's taking a beta blocker, if they're taking a calcium channel blocker, those are medications that can actually cause an AV node block. So on the MPTE, I would be ready uh, for you to pick out medications that would potentially cause the AV node block, not a medication used to treat the AV node block. All right, because a lot of times if the AV node block is significant enough, the patient is going to need some type of pacemaker of some sort, something along the lines of that, not necessarily a medication. Now, in the actual acute care setting, of course, you know, if there's some type of emergency related to the AV node block, they may push like atropine or something like that. You might have seen that on New Amsterdam. All right. If you watch that show or maybe you saw on Grey's Anatomy, but I don't expect that to show up on the MPTE. That's kind of like outside of our scope. All right. So what I will do is go ahead and put a big X next to D, AV node electrical blockade, leaving us with our final answer of B as in boy bronchospasm for those of you who got this one correct congratulations not freaking easy at all this is one of these medication questions where you have to understand what the medication is doing all right what the medication is is, is doing to the body what's its pharmacodynamics all right how is it working but also the side effects that the patient could potentially present to you with all right for those of you who are wondering, I see, I see in some of my comments wondering about HFA and what that really stands for. HFA stands for hydrofluoroalkyne, all right? Hydrofluoroalkyne, that's the propellant that pushes, you know, obviously the, the, the medication because this is an inhalant, y'all. This comes in an inhaler. And so the HFA, that is actually the propellant. So there you go. I don't ever want to just leave you with that, you know, understanding, you know, me just showing you how to go through the question. I want to take you a step further. For those of you on the podcast right now, you want a cheat sheet to help you dominate pulmonary, pulmonary medications that are likely to show up. I want you to go into the show notes, click the link in there. I got the cheat sheet for you, baby.